The world-renowned photographer Alan Tannenbaum, and they are loaned to us courtesy of the Williams Gallery. Their telephone number is 609-921-1142. Okay, 609-921-1142. Thank you. We'll be back in a moment with gossip on Donna, Ivana, and Mark. Sleep with you. From the moment they're born, the family bed is a good idea. We have too many parents in America who are literally holding the door when the kid will, I want to come out. And the kid is banging, and the parents, go to sleep, go to sleep. I want to come out, go to sleep. Birds don't do this. <laughs> Chipmunks don't do this. We, our kids are born, and we put them in a little crate isolated like it's a manufactured product of some kind let your kids sleep with you look at the thrilling response i got to this no, no. no. no another selfish parent certainly i need that space do you have any idea the warmth? You know, you got that 98.6 degree my husband. temp. I don't well, but what about your kids, though? They have their own room. Why should you let a child cry and scream every night? Because who said, where is this written in tablets? Good for their lungs. It's cruel. <laughs> no, it's not they cruel. They grow up feeling insecure. That's life. <laughs> America is sexually inhibited. And they can handle the fact that the child is in bed with them. And that's a bad thing. Of course. So you agree with the family bed? Well, not all the time. But sometimes, when they're infants, why not? And what, what age would you want them out? Around, well, out. Uh, around two or three. How about when dad's on a business trip? And they take turns coming Then you in. let him sleep when he's, when he's not home. And they're going to pray for him not to be home because they want... <laughs> Give him your pitch, Dr. William Sears. You are the father of seven children, assistant professor of pediatrics, USC. Go Trojans. Uh, you're, here with, uh, you're here with your highly regarded, uh, ever-loving wife, Martha Sears, and your two-year-old son, Stephen. You are four square in favor of a family bed? Come on, doctor. This is... This is never going to sell in America. <gasps> Absolutely, Phil. We're the ones who need it in America. We've got so much distance between our children. We in America need the family bed more than I think any other country. Well, that did about a one and a half on the meter. You wait a minute. I found a lady who agrees with you. You agree? Really? Yeah. What's it going to hurt? I mean, not when, when they're two, three, when they get to be seven, eight, you know, yeah. it's time. But they, they yeah. know. How do, you How do you get them out? How do you have sex when they're in the bed? That's true. And, you know, and are you, and I'll tell, and are you one of those weird people that makes a lot of noise when you have sex? No. How, what does this do to the kid? The kid grows up with this. We he doesn't know the children. difference between huh? us at all. We have seven children. It hasn't bothered us at all. <laughs> <laughs> huh? He has quiet sex. Yes, he has quiet sex. <laughs> uh, because uh, you're, you're really serious. You've, you've really given your professional uh, credentials to this, and you are not, uh, you're not a theorist. You, you actually do this. I strongly believe in it, Phil. It, what, it does good things for the babies. It does good things for the parents. It promotes bonding, especially in today's society where moms and dads do not have a lot of time with their children. Do all seven children still sleep with you? No. Well, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, uh, I wish two were in college, so <laughs> they don't. <laughs> now, you no. probably want to know several things. <laughs> Uh, how do you have sex? No small question here. Um, when do they leave? What age? How old is too old? Five? They should be out at five. Uh huh. I've got three of my own, and I think that five is like where they should get out of your bed. And do they sleep with you? Um, well, my two little ones do, because like they both drink bottles, and I have them both in bed with me in the morning, so I'm too tired to get up and you know like go take one, care of one, and then but the when other. When you go to bed at night, are they with you? No, not at night, but if they wake up during the night and cry, I put them in bed with me. And it really comes down. And is this down. okay with you-know-who? With my husband? Well, no, he just carries them out and puts them all on the couch. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? You know what else? If you have your kids in your bed sleeping with you, 
mothers sleep more soundly. Huh? Have you tried sleeping with a two-year-old? They're upside down, they're crossways. You can't sleep at all. So? I'm curious to the layout of your, your bedroom. Do you have a huge room with lots of beds, or do you have a... We have a nice bunk king, bed. Sir. We have a nice king size bed with just one baby in it, who does not sleep between the mom and the dad. We don't believe in babies coming between the mom and the dad. Here's the picture. You did appear to be nursing there. Is that so? Yes. Okay, so you nurse your baby, so that would be another practical consideration for taking them to bed with you. Okay, uh, interesting uh, strategies. Now, uh, you and daddy are together, so to speak, physically, and the child then would be on either side. Okay. Usually on the other side of mother, since mother has the equipment for the uh, middle of the night diner. Uh, in the nursing. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's okay during lactation. I assume when when they when they when they move on and mature to the bottle and formula and other, uh, it doesn't matter then, huh? Well, no, it doesn't. It does make life a lot easier though. You don't have to be getting up and down like a yo-yo all night, running into the other room, feeding them, putting them down, going back and yep. doing it over three times. Well, guess what, Hayden? Your beloved 13-year-old daughter is here and she looks fine to us. Uh, you're in the eighth grade. You've survived. We're not going to worry about you, Hayden. Um, do you have memories of this experience as a child? Yeah, I do. Um, when my mom when, my mom asked me when I was about four years old if I wanted to start sleeping on the floor next to their bed because my sister was going to be born in a couple months. I said, no, I wanted to stay in the bed till the last minute. <laughs> and she did. And then when the baby was born, what happens to Hayden? I slept um, on the floor next to the bed and I was just fine. Mm -hmm. Now we have stories out there of, you know, parents who, I mean, literally hold the Put, throw their body against the door. You've got to go to sleep. I can't go to sleep. You've got to go to sleep. Four o'clock in the morning, a kid is under the bed, <laughs> on top of the dresser drawers, in the bathroom. Think about the trauma of the child. What? A couple of things. I've got two kids. I have a queen-size bed in my new big house in New England because in New England you don't get many houses with large master bedrooms. We can't fit a king-size bed in our house. We couldn't fit one in our other house. But I've always kept a rocking chair in my child's room and go in and cuddle with the baby in his room, make sure that he knows that this is his safe place to be for the rest of his life. This is his room. Well, that's a pretty conscientious thing to do. Now, this gets in the way of your sleep. And what good are you then as a mother the next day if you've had this kind of fitful night? It's the deal. It's what you buy when you get pregnant. Br bring the rocking chair into your room. <laughs> um, let me see. Uh, Mary, yes. you are the person to whom I wish to speak next. Okay. You're the mother of two. Your, yes. babies are, your young babies are ages two and five. Yes. You've been married eight years. You just don't buy this, do you? We have, our two-year-old is currently in our bed because of a series of situations this summer we took vacations she's ended up there because we disrupted her schedule and routine so much that uh, she we it was just easier out of desperation we brought her into our bed to get her to sleep because different environment uh, she's oh. a little rattled etc yeah. so you're guests, accommodating her here yes. but you don't think that this is necessarily the ideal that, no, the, that the Sears do it's very difficult for us very difficult to get a good night's sleep to have that time alone at night, there's not a lot of time during the day that my husband and I just have each other. When we have, when you have little kids in the house, it can be, it's hard to get a little time to talk to your spouse. And we've always had that time before, after bedtime, after we put the kids to bed, to just be the two of us. Do you understand when, their commitment to this? Um, it's, you know, if you look at the animal world, I'll tell you what, uh, those squirrels are with mommy a long time, and so are the chipmunks yeah. and the groundhogs and the mammalian world on the nipple until they go to medical school these kids <laughs> uh, for a long time throughout much of their maturation and here we come the yeah. king of the beasts as we would uh, some men would describe the uh -huh. human species and we do seem to go out of our way to separate our young at a time when they're least capable of understanding it well I, I don't know if it's called separation as much as encouraging good sleep habits and my kids did have good sleep habits. And or my son at five has wonderful sleep habits. My two-year-old, of course, we upset the apple cart by carting her around to grandma and grandpa's house. And then we go to the other grandma and grandpa's house. And then we take a vacation. And then we have house guests. And let's really mess things up here with all these 
distractions. Yeah. And I think it's important for them to be able to go to sleep on their own. And they had been able to. So I know it's a, a reality. But I've known real good parents who do not abuse their children who've actually locked the kid in the crib, put a top oh. on the crib. <laughs> bad, well, bad, I mean, bad. what are you going to do? The child gets out yeah. <laughs> every <laughs> night. They've got options. What? There are options. <laughs> you, your kid what? My child slept at the top of the stairs on the floor for three months because he didn't want to move into a big bed and he didn't want to stay in the crib. And that but was he, okay with you? Well, if that's what he wants to do, yes. I made him up a little bed on the floor. If you want to sleep on the floor, fine. Yeah. Do your thing. But he How never... How do you know he's not going to leave in the middle of the night and get a plane to Dallas? <laughs> <laughs> How old was he when he was at the... See, that would terrify most parents. Two, two and a half. You weren't afraid he's going to roll down the stairs? No, I, I put, a, put a little blockade up to protect him. So, in other words, let him have a certain amount of... Uh, of independence, but... And choice. But he never had an option of coming into my bed. So that you would not allow. Telling no. you, he won't. Four square. Right. Tough luck. Not an option. You're drawing the line. Right. Boy, oh boy, he's got Mussolini for a mother. Disconsistent. <laughs> Are you there, caller? I'm glad you waited. Hi. Yes, I am. I could no more have my children sleep with me every single night. Uh, I'd have to be with them every single day. Uh, for them to get used to the fact that I'm not always going to be there for them. And I think if you start them off at an early age, you know, at two years old, they're on their own. They know the difference between mommy's bed and their own bed. What a problem. Baby number four came along, and she was different. We, she wasn't in any of the books. We had to write our own book about this kind of baby. And she slept in our room in a cradle next to our bed for the first six months. Um, and, and she needed to be there. Otherwise, I would have been up and down the stairs all night. Our bedrooms were all on different floors. Um, at the age of six months, she was climbing out of the cradle, so we had to put her in the big crib. So we moved her over against the wall in our bedroom. She had to stay in the bedroom. Um, and she woke up every hour. She hated the cage, and she hated the separation. Even the 10 feet apart was too much. Are you there? And Call her hi. Hi. What do you think? Uh, I agree with the doctor. I don't see anything wrong with you know, your children sleeping in your bed with you. I did it against my, my doctor's orders. You know, the pediatrician advised me not to. And my son is now eight, and occasionally he still comes into my bed, and I allow it. And I just don't see anything wrong with it. Lawrence Balter, Ph.D., joins us. You are a child psychologist, and I'll give you a moment to make your point. Uh, you will forgive this interruption. You should know that... Uh, this this uh, PhD agrees with your pediatrician. Uh, in fact, my guess is that most of the members of the professional pediatric community vote no on the family bed. And we'll be back in just a moment. America, is it possible that our culture has turned us off to this notion, which ought to be very natural? Are you there, caller? Hi. Hi. Uh, yeah, I have a two-year-old daughter, and she started staying with us when we were first born. My wife had a cesarean section, and yeah. it made it a lot easier for her to... Plus, I work nights. Well, I set changed, and now I'm on days, and as one woman on it said, sleeping with a two-year-old is almost impossible. Well, that's because you're, you're a man. Well, no, not necessarily being a man, but you try with a two-year-old going from one end of the bed all night long. Right. So when you're home alone, then, you're, you, is it a daughter? Yes. Your daughter, accustomed as she is to sleeping with mommy, then assumes she's going to be able to sleep with daddy, and she keeps you up all night. Uh, pretty much, yeah. I assume there might be some anxiety that you'll roll over and, you know, well, maybe I have, smother I, the kid. I have the same anxiety. I'm afraid I don't get a good night's sleep because I'm going to roll over. That's baby. what I mean, yeah. Uh... Well, the baby doesn't have to be next to father. We already said that. You On the other side of mother with a guardrail. Well, but when he's alone, he's making the point oh, that mom sometimes worked. They have a put staggered ship. What we chip. call the sidecar arrangement. You put a crib right next to the bed. You that, take the rail off. That, that's how we did it before. We, after a while, we Great. brought the crib into our room, Good. separated her into the crib. Now she is now going into her own room. We've moved sense to another mm -hmm. place. And now she is starting to get accustomed, but she still wakes up in the middle of the night. Um... Please give your attention to Michelle Mason. You're here from San Francisco, where you are a parenting educator, 
uh, at Natural Resources. You probably, you know, encourage breastfeeding and all, all good things, uh -huh. right? Um, in fact, uh, and how old is Hannah? Hannah's 18 months. 18 months? Uh -huh. Hi, Hannah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, and I, is, I, do you nurse Hannah? I think you do. I certainly do. Yeah. And both of my children sleep in my bed with me. I have a three and a half year old daughter and a one and a half year old daughter. And I meet with about 15 to 20 women every week in a postpartum class that I facilitate. Uh -huh. And sleeping is the number one issue in parenting. And oh, a really? lot of really? yes, and a it's lot where of, the wars wow. begin, isn't it? That's right. And a lot of women yeah. want to naturally. Uh -huh. No, please no, their baby no, and instinctually no, follow what no, they should do no, and it's no, pediatricians no, that are telling us that we shouldn't do that okay love it's, it's, it's okay it's okay Nico. Uh, yes i'm not big bird but i'll have so to do for so we have to start really listening <laughs> uh, she has given me your driver's license so Thank hang you. on <laughs> <laughs> uh, your, pediatrician, no. your pediatrician told you you shouldn't sleep with your no, baby no pediatrician oh. this is what i hear on a weekly basis is that pediatricians will tell their the mothers not to sleep with their child and to let the child cry themselves to sleep and it's really bad information bad. and i really disagree with it in a big way yeah, uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> And uh, without indicting all pediatricians, yes. it was the pediatric community that took mother babies off the nipple of uh, the That's mother's right. breast That's milk. Right. It started a long time ago. Uh, so we have here a uh, mostly male, or certainly it's changing now, but uh -huh. we've heretofore mostly male professional community that seemed very hurried in the effort to separate mother and child that's right and you see this is an extension of that pattern that's right it's the most natural way of mothering and i think as mothers that we really have to follow our instincts it's never been a problem for me i've never sleeping has never been an issue it's just never been an issue so. are you there caller hi yes i am um my husband went to desert storm when our daughter was three months old right and when he left she she did the the, there was no sleeping problems. She was fine. When he came back, terrible sleeping problems. She wakes up screaming in the middle of the night and will not go back to sleep. And she used to scream 40, 45 minutes if we tried to just sit there and let her scream. And I couldn't stand it anymore. I ended up sleeping on the living room floor with her for a while. And now she goes to bed in her crib. But she wakes up in the middle of the night, will not go back to sleep, and she ends up in the bed with us. And right. it's driving us crazy because... We, you know, we need the time to get to, you know, reacquainted. We want time to talk, you know, and it's, it's driving us completely crazy. Right. We don't know what to do about it. Now, when your husband went to Desert Storm, did your child sleep with you? No, huh? Oh. She slept in the crib fine. I see. So dad comes back into the house and now we've got these fitful nights, huh? Yep, exactly. And it's driving us crazy. And he's scheduled to go on deployment again in December. Yeah. And it's just, it's never enough time for just us alone. You have heard this before, Michelle Mason. Yes, I do. I well, it's not going to make you feel better, but apparently you're involved in a central common uh, conflict of uh, early parenthood. And she should what? She should just listen to her baby and respond to her baby. And clearly our children in the first three to four years of life go through lots of different changes. And if we respond to them... What, what about her husband? What, what about her husband? Home for four months? What? He doesn't count anymore? Than, no, but it's a, it's a very temporary thing. You would be surprised so how quick. marriage it. sometimes. You <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Bolter, sir, you get to speak. What did you want to, would you want to say, uh, just having listened in here? Well, I think there are so many things I want to point out. First of all, to talk about doing what's natural is a kind of global statement. You don't do everything that feels good because it isn't necessarily good for you or for your child. Just for starters. So if your child wanted to, uh, to have an extra couple of lollipops, if the child's going to cry about it, you're not necessarily going to go along and indulge the child and let the child have it because you think you know what's best for your child. Lollipops are natural. That's Sorry. That's for one thing. <laughs> but we know that instinct doesn't really guide parents properly, that they really need to learn how to be good parents. That's instinct boundary, isn't... That's boundary setting he's talking about. We're not talking about boundary setting. Okay, that's let me, let me, let me suggest talking. a few things. Sometimes what, what I hear when I'm listening to this is that people have confronted a difficult situation, found a short-term solution for it, 
and have turned it into a philosophy of child rearing. I think the idea most parents have in mind is to help their kids become more independent and to be more self-reliant. Yeah, you know, I don't know if you want. But how do you get independent? Dependency exhibit A dependency here, people. Dependency comes from independence. Well, well exhibit A is not a really a good example let's, yeah, let's because see. she's a very delightful and intelligent and attractive young woman, and I probably would be glad to have her as my own daughter. But if I dragged that. Old Uncle Joe, who smoked 14 packs of cigarettes a day and, and, and drank, you know, and well, he lived to 95. That's not an example of something that's good or, or recommended. Uh, okay, we accept your point that this is an anecdote and not necessarily proof. Thank you. Do I understand you to believe that it wouldn't... There are cultures, as you know, that do this. Yeah, but not Human this, culture. Yes, of course, but not this. There are many other things in those cultures that are also very different But you, from you our see culture. this as dissonant with our society. Yes, I do. Because why? Well, let me just make one well, other point. For a number of things. Well, first of all, there isn't just extremes in this. You don't just have to put a kid in what they call a cage and let him cry all night long. There are a number of options you have, which we haven't explored, short of putting him in a cage or putting the bureau up against the door so they can't get in. Lots of stuff you can do short of that. And I'll give you a chance to spell out some of those. Custom to falling asleep. This is already an established problem. If she had started at three and a half months, she wouldn't have this problem now. Michelle? I really believe it. <laughs> you did well. My feelings are, again, I can't emphasize enough that we just need to listen to our children. It's a very short time. It's a, I mean, think of yeah. how fast the time goes by with your little babies I, I, and your little ones. I'll tell so, you what, I'm sorry, you wanted to say. I didn't mean to interrupt. Oh, that's okay. I, I wanted to say that I think that the woman should listen to her heart and follow what she feels is best. And I think it's fine to go into the baby's room and rock the baby, as someone else said in the audience, or do whatever, but pay attention to yeah. the baby and meet the baby's need. Right. But, uh, just let me say, when a child is screaming <laughs> to the point where they can't... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, yeah then they stop, and then you get the scream, and then, it la then they, you know, when they stop, and it lasts like three days, uh -huh. and you think they're going to expire. Hyperventilating is what they call that. Now, right. I know it's easy for a, for a guy my age who's already had the youngsters are all oldsters now to say this, but it does seem a special kind of cruelty for otherwise wonderful parents to slam the door on a child in that emotional condition. Absolutely. No one recommends it's slamming a, the door on a What do you want this woman to do, though? Comfort the child in the child's own child. room. It really All right. is. We'll be back in just a <laughs> uh, Nighttime parenting, how to get your baby and child to sleep, uh, is William Sears' contribution to our discussion here. This is the physician who is not alone, we should say, in advocating the family bed. Yes, let your baby sleep with you. What's the matter with it? Everybody else does. What's the matter with our culture? Keep pushing these kids away. You know, it used to be, you couldn't even touch the baby who was born. It held up the baby behind a glass door. Hey, the baby. <laughs> don't touch the baby. The baby will get germs. How did we get this far? What I do don't you know. I don't you, know. You buy this, right? Yes. You like it a lot. I like it a lot. I have a six-year-old and an almost three-year-old, and they have slept with us since they were born. With Matthew, our oldest one, we did experiments because our pediatrician recommended that we didn't have our baby in bed with us because it would come between our husband, my husband and me, and um, it went against how I felt. He cried a lot, and we put him in bed, and we're happy. We've got a strong marriage, and I we're bet, doing great. I bet you do. And here is the young woman about whom we speak. Hi, honey. I'm so glad you're here. It's fun being on TV, oh, isn't it? Huh? <laughs> uh, and Rebecca Huntley, uh, you've written a book, The Sleep Book for Tired Parents. Well, that ought to sell with that title. Um, what are you going to say now? Whatever works for you, and let's not be rigid either way. Yeah, I bring a practical perspective to all this. We've talked about listening to the baby, and we also have to listen to ourselves as parents. Uh -huh. And I think the bottom line is not who sleeps with who, but who's sleeping. <laughs> uh, yeah. um, and if your child is screaming, as I attempted to uh, demonstrate here, we've all known, every parent has known it, the child just won't go to sleep. I assume you're against hard lineism, huh? I think there, for some parents that works really well, um, but some people just can't do it. And so don't waste your time fighting with yourself. Figure out what works and then do that. Uh, we'll stand by and give us some free advice here as we make our way. Are you there, caller? Thank you. Are you there? Hello? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, I've got a one-year-old baby girl, and she slept with us ever since she's been born. Well, and I see nothing wrong with the child sleeping with their parents. My right. husband encourages it. Right. When do you think she'll get her own bed? 
when she feels she's ready. How about uh, age four? If she still feels she needs us for security, she'll be there with us. Five? Still the same. <laughs> Six? Still the same. When she feels that she's ready to have her own bed and security. They don't? Uh -huh. See, I think people are worried they will. No, I don't think so. We use the word security as though it's something that a child receives only at night. If uh, you have a child and you give the child that security during the day. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I agree. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Well, let me say one thing about that. What if you're a working mother? Working mothers need the family bed more than uh, the stay-at-home moms do. It's, it's easier on them. Solution. It's they a perfect solution. I agree with that because my daughter, she's 19, but when she was younger, she had nightmares from age one to five, and she slept with us every night. She woke up in the middle of the night screaming, and we let her sleep with us. There was nothing wrong with it. Lucky I have two children. Yeah. Both yeah. Of which, I have both all kinds. I'm sorry. Both of my children were good sleepers. Both of them. My son, I, I learned, my mother-in-law said early on, don't just put the baby to bed when he's tired or sound asleep. Put him down and he'll learn to put himself to sleep. And sure enough, as much as I didn't want to <coughs> do it, I did it and it worked. And it does and, for some people. And my daughter, the same thing up until age two. When, as soon as she got in our bed, she hasn't slept well. We haven't slept well. But now, what do we do once she's there? And now, we, d we did try the closing the door thing one night. For Lord's sake, that kid tore the room apart. She threw herself against the door. It was an awful thing. But Mary, that's yeah. what's but important. We're in you, you went against your instinct. You said, I didn't want to do it, but I did it. And, and that's a mistake. You say, don't, don't go against it. your instinct. Yeah, yeah. 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 mother-in-law, whatever you Dorian, say. Dorian, I'm sorry. There's a, uh, one, point, uh, one point I'd like to make. It seems that... Uh, first of all, it works. A lot of different individual things work, and you have to really listen to yourself and to your child. But what I'm noticing uh, from some of the people that disagree with the family bed, if you will, yeah, is that it inconveniences them, and I don't think that that should be uh, an ingredient in this whole. It discussion. does appear to be the area where parents. No one would do this with food. Yeah. No one would do this with education. But when but it, it comes to work. bedtime, suddenly, we're, we've all got a four stars on our helmet, <laughs> jack right. boots. Yeah. And it bedtime takes work. We have to work at this. You house. will kids, go to bed. Our kids love it. <laughs> they love to go to bed. We go to bed and we are And we're rattled, yeah. And I got a break. I'm sorry, Michelle. We'll be back in just a moment. <laughs> You're going to go to bed. It's Bedtime seven. is not like that, Phil, in our house. Uh -oh. Can you tell them what it's like in our house? Um, my brother and sister and I go into their bed. My mom reads us a story. And then I go into my room and I go to sleep. And then my sister and brother lay down happily and go to sleep. They don't cry. They go to sleep quickly. And, and we don't have to argue about bedtime. They're, they're there before I am. Sure. They're yeah. waiting for Mom, come on. Read the story. Read the story. Really? And then my mom and dad go downstairs, have a cup of tea, come upstairs and go to bed easily. Uh, Dr. Balter, who commends you for your, uh, the passion with, that you bring to this issue, uh, does depart with you uh, in some cases. No, he's not for uh, tying kids to beds. Not at all. Dr. And Spock he, uh, said, let him vomit. If they put, put him in the bed, let him cry till they vomit. Dr. Spock, check it out. It's in the 1985 edition. 85? Uh, no, I think he's rewritten that, no. though. Uh, who's in control of Dr. Balter's Guide to Discipline without combat? Shouldn't we all? have one of these. Are you there, caller? I'm glad you waited. Hi. Yes, I totally disagree with what the people on the stage are saying. I've got three children, 10, 5, and 2, and we made the mistake of letting the first two sleep with us. So we have a five-year-old that thinks that she can come in and sleep whenever, and we've tried just thinking about them, going back in there and sitting with them until she goes to sleep, but it just doesn't work. Yeah, do, do you spank him? Um, just a firm pop on the bottom and say, you know, this is your room, this is our room. We try to, you know, there's, there's clearly boundaries. You yeah. know, we're with them all day, and then at night should be their time in their room. Hang on a minute. Okay. I think if they're scared or, you know, nightmares, then sure they can come in with parents, but they should know that they have their own room. And a lot of kids, you know, stay in their own room and go all the time. Yeah. Yeah. So I think for working parents that sleep is more than an inconvenience, as he put it. You can't go to work the next day if you haven't slept. Yeah, but it sounds like you need your... I work your every That's day. Easy. I work every day. I go to work every about. day. I go to work, Phil? Okay. Yes, Dorian. To the, to the uh, young lady that talked about the inconvenience. I work 14 to 16 hours a day. I get up at 4.30 to 5 every morning. 
and it isn't an inconvenience to commit to my children and try to listen to what they're doing. Yeah. I, lose sleep. I, I lose sleep. I lose sleep with my 19-month-old daughter. I'm sorry, Nancy, you wanted to say, I thank he you so much. He doesn't always lose sleep. I mean, there are nights when they're teething or there are nights that they have nightmares like any other child but yeah. they sleep really very well my daughter who is four sleeps through the night and she's chosen to to leave the room for right. most of the time now hang on yeah, for the audience choice. here i can't sleep with my daughter does that make me a bad mother yes I it does yes. Yes. you should feel guilty sit down <laughs> yeah. no, yes. no. i'm a school supervisor and i get your kids when you're finished with them and they don't know they don't know any limits they have to learn limits they have to learn how to <laughs> Hey, uh, you show me a school supervisor, and I'll show you somebody who doesn't like parents. Uh, and hey, yeah. There are a lot of ways for, for I think children. it's comforting to know that there are a lot of children that don't have security problems, and there are a host of well-adjusted adults yes. and children who never slept with their parents That's in their right. beds. That's correct. That it's working for you, but I just can't get over the sex thing. I can't. What about the intimacy? I mean, the, you know, the... Try your living room in front of the fireplace. Try the laundry room. Yes. It's just... <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think, yeah, yeah. I think you should just cut the cord and give the kids their independence regardless. They'll get over yeah. it. Yeah. Hayden, at what age, what age did you, like, stop sleeping with your parents? What age? Yeah. Uh, you mean Dorian? Uh, uh, or, oh, Hayden, yeah. Whatever. When did you finally move out of the family bed, Hayden? Me? Yeah. Um... I don't, she, she stopped at, at four when the new baby, four and a half, when the new baby came, and then we went to Australia for two weeks, and we gave her the choice. When she was five, did she want to come with us or stay? She chose to stay. That's independence. Yes. That's okay, right. I just wanted to ask to the parents out there, aren't you afraid that you're going to create more problems for when they get older? Because they're going to figure they can get their own way now. You create a healthy sleep attitude when they're young, they're going to sleep better sure. when they're old. Yeah. Yeah, I'd like to add this, Phil. Please, we're running out of time. Okay, I've got there, so much wisdom about it. Go ahead, Nancy. Okay, it's really a relatively short time that they're actually in bed with you, but the message that you give them, the fact that you're there for them 100% day or night lasts a lifetime. That's yeah. I just want to say uh, two or three years and, and under, that's fine. But I mean, once they get out of diapers and some children wet the bed, talk about taking the romance out of the bedroom. <laughs> I think, what an I think any, children, any parents that have small children, I think they should start off from day one, letting the child stay in his crib. For as long as in the crib. In the, in the crib. In the crib. You know, a better thing is just leave him at the hospital and get yeah. on with your life. Uh, yeah, yeah. I That's more convenient sure. after all, Phil. Yeah. I think and then drop them off at the school. I think it's with very important that parents here not be made to feel guilty if they don't want their kids in the bed with them. Right. And vice versa. And vice versa. Yes, ma'am. I have four sons, and if they feel insecure during the night, they take the pillow and they blanket and they come into the floor because there's not. Speaking of your room. And, and you're not disciplining him for that? No. You let him do it. Well, that's a nice intermediate approach. Yes. I was going to ask this guy, do you think having like strict parents is a deterrent for kids to go sleep with their parents? I think you can be very nice and you can be democratic with them, but they don't have to sleep in your bed for that. Time. What? This is a very modern issue. When you look at it from a historical point of view, actually people slept together until, as families. Yeah, yeah until the whole family, because they didn't have an extra ride. This is our new modern society. Let's get rid of these kids. We'll be back in a moment. Chemical propellants.